Escape from Tarkov is more than just a hardcore survival shooter game. It has actual story behind it that goes behind even way, way before the game was made, well, playable. And we're gonna be exploring that in this video. There is a reason why your PMC is fighting for survival in the post-apocalyptic world of Tarkov. And there is way bigger story behind it than any of the players may have envisioned at the very start. And it has been hinted at by Nikita, the lead developer of Tarkov. And I'm gonna do my best to fill in the details that I could find and overall compile in this video. First, to fully understand the story of Tarkov, you have to know that there are three game projects that are linked together by books, novels, even concept art. And the three games are Contract Wars, Escape from Tarkov, and Russia 2028. Contract Wars being the first successful game from Battlestay Games, well, whilst it was light on lore, it all the concept art and the lore overall was placed in the content that came with it and created along the way. So the story was build up for Escape from Tarkov and later on Tarkov and Contract Wars are just like stepping stones to the very big game that uh, Battlestay games are working for until they collect all the funding and requirements and studio size to actually work on this big game that will follow Escape from Tarkov's and Contract Wars story and continue to build on it. But for now, let's dive into Tarkov itself. Tarkov City is the largest metropolitan area in the Norvinsk Special Economical Zone. And the Norvinsk zone was created essentially to be a gateway to the Western world, which, as you would guess, was planned to essentially link Europe with Russia. And commercial enterprises had much more that they could do, there weren't so many restrictions there, so not also that many laws that controlled what they could do so it was like a large capitalist boom there just to mention city of tarkov if compared to other eastern european and russian cities at the time was very modern if looking at that other business headquarters were starting to move to city of Tarkov because there were many incentives and supporting incentives by the zone itself and of course as you can imagine the more the city grew the more and more well other businesses came into play and started using that region for their own benefit there were no restrictions basically no red tapes what they could and could not do so, as, as time went on, a group, Terra Group, you have to remember this further because they're a heavy player in the story, also came along and set up their headquarters in Tarkov City. So, let's dig deeper into Terra Group, since they're a heavy player in the Tarkov story, and overall, one of the lead things that led to this cataclysm that is Tarkov now. So, as the name implies, Terra Group is not just one corporation. It's a large group of corporations that work together towards the same goal, which also includes shell companies and other holders, and here also were involved uh, certain organizations, which led investigators to dead ends who followed paper trails. And, of course, as it goes usually with these kinds of companies and groups in other games or movies or series doesn't matter it 
started getting into very violent scandals between the years of 2016 and 2028, which was caused basically by the terror group organization paying off Russian officials and some bits of the military to acquire old military hardware for what they needed it that is still little known so other than that they became closely knit with the USIC company which is for defense and like a private army you could say and maybe even absorbed it too at the time when uh, everything started happening and hitting the fan basically I will get into USIC a bit later, but all for now that you have to know is that USIC started their security operations in every single terror group organization's location and taking essentially over basic security up to military grade security. Meanwhile, terror group has been acquiring real estate and other properties illegally all around the Norvinsk region and overall the uh, Tarkov city zone. As the operation grew, of course the interest in their activity by overall the Russian government grew of, as well because their activity was rather illegal and they started getting a hold of many things and overall gained control over many of the security regions in the Tarkov city. As the investigations started going cold and bodies started missing with the involvement of USEC, all the investigations started falling on um, Western country ears. And of course, USEC started getting more involved and much more interest was gained in the activity in the Tarkov region. Now with the rumors of UN peacekeepers coming to the region soon, Russian operatives, essentially basic uh, government funded operatives were being withdrawn from the region. And now a very secret, uh, you could say, organization which is by the name Bears were being sent to the area. Of course, Russia denied it, but at the very end it was found out that even Kremlin specifically knew about it and were funding them. The Bears' objectives were plain and simple in reality. It was essentially get through the use of security and understand and find out what is actually happening in the terror group organization by force if necessary and try to understand why are they keeping so many secrets and why they are being hidden like that and soon after bears were deployed to the Tarkov region they instantly became under violent fire by the USIC organization which sent Tarkov the whole area of Tarkov to be essentially a massive battleground between the two factions. Weeks passing with the violent conflict between USEC and Bears being very active and essentially bodies piling more and more, Terror Group and Russian government decided to seal off the Tarakov region from more UN peacekeepers arriving and essentially Western powers too because if NATO countries would send in actual uniform NATO troops it could escalate very quickly into a massive standoff between all of the nuclear powers and even more so NATO investigators could get to the bottom of terror groups experiments and everything that they have been hidden much quicker than the bears did and of course the russian government really does not like the sound of that so they just closed off the region for good very soon that followed was a massive blockade around the whole tarkov region 
but that was enforced by the Russian military but even though there was a no-fly zone unmarked craft were being seen at every time of the day doing in insertions and supply drops for both sides and not, there was nothing they could do to stop that now after all the ev evacuations being complete UN peacekeepers saw a very very curious event happening a very large portion of the residents that lived in the Tarkov region stayed behind and well just tried to attempt to thrive in the now truly lawless region and gain some kind of well, gain out of the whole area being a complete war zone they took on weapons they formed groups together and uh, started to live there they were named scavs and they essentially were everything from regular street thugs to residents to ex-former military personnel to even pmcs which got kind of lost from their own groups and started not supporting their actions and they just joined the scavs to continue living in the area and fight for survival through a different kind of group which was well you could say even like a brotherhood essentially as more time went on of course scavs started forming around certain areas and stuck to those areas and new scav bosses also appeared and they're very well known for their brutal approach and overall their contact to the outside world to get supplies or other things or sometimes just gaining their power by pure enforcement by physical force they go by the names of Kila, Rushala, Glukar, and of course there's many others. Of course these warlords served as middlemen for their followers to the outside world gaining weapons, ammunition and supplies for their followers to continue using in the battle against now the USEC and BEAR organizations. And now just the minor annoyance that the scouts were they grew into a massive threat to the PMCs in the area as the supplies diminished. The supplies of water, stable electricity, and everything else. The attacks grew in frequency and overall just started taking them out more and more. And with that, the scavs became a very well-known threat to the area. As the fighting now reaching its climax in the Tarkov region, an unspecified bear PMC found very interesting intel. It was helmet cam of an unmarked USEC soldier in an undisclosed lab's location, Terra Group's labs, basically um, just rounding up all, every single worker scientist and researcher and committing mass shootings there and then the, every single bear operative as time went on started feeling disenfranchised from their organization and felt like they've been abandoned in Tarkov to die now that both organizations troops were trying to make their escape out of Tarkov they've met with well very surprising fates to say the least it was given a shoot on site order by the government so they did not discriminate anyone who was trying to cross the borders didn't matter it was woods water or through the city they got shot and killed on sight. So now that both parties were di getting disenfranchised from their organizations, they were 
started to get spotted working together sometimes even in small groups just trying to survive in the region collecting food ammunition and other supplies of course they're not left completely alone there are some warlords in the region that seek profit and saw that there's an opportunity for money to be made so of course they gave these operators specific tasks favors in exchange for supplies essential supplies to survive or ammunition weapons or even upgrades for your hideout or supplies to upgrade your hideout which is the area where your pmc technically stays behind and rests and tries to live these warlords go by pseudonyms of course so you don't know their real name and these names go such as the mechanic therapist skier fence proper and there's a few others that you unlock as you play the game forward and try to get in contact with them and it is vital that you keep in good standing with these warlords if you want to have an upper hand with the competition you have in the streets of Tarkov so to gain better standings you do their tasks you gain reputation and in return you get better gear better food better ammunition and essentially slowly raise the ranks in uh, the area of Tarkov to as we players call them being giga chads you become an unstoppable killing machine and Tarkov today has gone a full circle as you and your PMC go into the hostile area to try to fight for survival it's been some time now since Tarkov has been blocked off from the essentially outer world the scavs have become very dangerously armed to the teeth and very skilled in the fighting and survival tactics in the region the UN peacekeepers have been proven to be as corrupt as everyone else in the region funding genocide and playing both sides when it pays them good and now it's just up to you to survive Will you team up with other players, other PMCs, or you will play as a solo rogue agent trying to just fight for survival, killing everyone you see on site. But even with all the time that has passed, Terror Group still has plenty of secrets, and now with the latest update to the game, unlocking the streets of Tarkov, the main metropolitan area, the big city, there are secrets to be found and there are very, very many different things and secrets you could find out for yourself that I could not mention in this video because it was so recent that there's basically no information currently out there. But with that being said, I hope you liked the video, hope this was informative and at least shed some light on the lore and story of the game. And with that being said, well, like and subscribe if, if you enjoyed it and if you would like to see more videos like this about other games. And now, I'll be heading out.